Hey everyone, the name is Chris Porochi. Welcome to this special episode. Today I want to talk about how to buy the right guitar. I have five great tips for you for your next guitar purchase that might put you in the right mindset. Before we get into it, two things. First of all, if you enjoy my videos, hit subscribe would help me a lot. And of course, the second thing is the description box, which is always full of very useful infos, timestamps, links, etc. Let's go. Now, of course, I'm not here to tell you which guitar you should buy. No one could ever guess what fits you most other than yourself. There's one sentence that will come up all the time and you will understand why. So number one is going to be don't focus on brands too much. I know it's really hard. I used to be a huge fanboy of one brand. I didn't want to look at anything else. My heroes played it, I wanted to have it. And for years, I didn't even look at any other brands until I figured out, oh, wait a second. Um, this other guitar fits me more. Oops. Number two is closely related to the first one. Be open for alternatives. Even if you know exactly which model you want to buy and you go in a shop or you search in a web shop and you're so focused on this one guitar, There is maybe something else out there that will click right away. And if you're open-minded and, and you're open for these alternatives, you will find these opportunities, these moments way easier. And here comes this magical sentence. The first time in this video, listen to your gut feelings. It's very important. <laughs> Number three, don't be obsessed by a detail. Working at Toma and having so many customers around, I've seen this so many times. I couldn't even possibly count. Being obsessed with details. I want a certain radius. I want a certain amount of frets. Or I want, I want a Floyd. Or I don't want a Floyd. Or I want this body wood. Or that scale length. These are things that are very important, obviously. And uh, still, you should not focus on this one detail. Let's say you have a guitar at home and that guitar has a pretty flat radius. I don't know, 16 inch radius. And you love it on that guitar. And then from this moment on, you're only searching for guitars with 16 inch radius fretboards. That 16 inch radius could feel totally different if the neck curve and the back is different. Or let's say you always hated Floyds, but you find a guitar that has a Floyd and you don't even play it because it has a Floyd. Or there's this other guitar and your gut feelings say, oh my God, I should try that. But then you're like, nah, it has a, a different scale length. Nah, it's not my guitar. Or it has a too fat neck. 
and I only love super thin necks, play it, try it, give it a go, order it, whichever, if you're online, offline, doesn't really matter. You never know. If you're stubborn, you could, you could miss the opportunity and miss your dream guitar just because it had two details wrong. I have two great examples in my case where I thought this will never work and I was totally wrong. First example is the PRS Silver Sky guitar, which is a very S type guitar and it has a very round radius. It has a seven and a quarter inch radius fretboard and I was like, oh, that ain't gonna work. You will have a stupidly high string action and you will not be able to bend and it will be miserable to play and it's not it's one of the nicest playing s type guitars i ever played and not just one of those all of them and the second thing is about the three left three right gibson headstock especially the d and the g strings have this angle they're not parallel anymore as soon as they leave the nut they sort of spread in a v shape and everyone's complaining, well, not everyone, a lot are complaining, oh, these guitars are miserable, you cannot keep them in tune, blah, blah, blah. And I believed that. I was like, okay, well, then no Gibson ever in my life. And then I played a couple, and I figured out it's all about the nuts. If you have the right nut material, if the nuts filed the right way, you will not have any tuning issues at all. I have three Gibson guitars, all three are perfect in terms of tuning stability and there's no difference whatsoever between the two E strings and the D and the G string. Again, it's something I was so sure about. I was like, ah, no, 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 no. I won't even look at those guitars because they are not stable. And they are. All your preconceptions are to be thrown away. It's, it's incredible. Number four, ignore the spec list if possible. Of course, specs are important in a way that they tell you what to expect. The only issue is if you're looking for how many points are on the spec lists, how long is that list, instead of how the guitar makes you feel, if the guitar inspires you, if it helps you to play better, if it helps you to pick that guitar up more often, which makes you, at the end of the day, a better player. These things are not on the spec list. A spec list for me is something like the ingredients on a recipe. You see the ingredients, you can have a good idea of how it will taste, but you don't know it for sure if you love it or if it's only, yeah, it's all right. It's a little boring, but it's all right. And that, that thing, that extra is not on the spec list. Then again, listen to your gut feelings. It's more important than the spec list and the length of that list. And number five might sound a little sad, but it's not at all sad. It's something that's part of this whole process. Be prepared to be unsuccessful. It's not always easy to find the right guitar. You can order one or two or go in a store and play one, two, three, ten, and not find anything that's inspiring you. And that's all right. If you know exactly how the guitar you're searching for should sound, 
should feel, should look, it's not gonna be an easy find. If you're going for a normal guitar, a budget, medium price, price range, expensive, normal production guitar, it might take some time. Don't be upset about not being successful at the first or second time. At the end, you will find the guitar you're searching for and you will even appreciate it more because it was a long process. <laughs> I am 100% sure I forgot a couple of very important points on my little list. Five is not a lot. I'm sure there are some tips you guys have for others. Share them in the comment section. I would love to read them. Cheers, guys. See you soon.